is a short introduction about neuroanalysis and uh, clinical brain profiling. It is a short slideshow that explains only the main things about the idea. You can find more about neuroanalysis on a specially dedicated website. And all you need to do is just type neuroanalysis in Google and it comes up as shown in this slide. Furthermore, you can find more information about neuroanalysis in a specially dedicated manuscript. As you can see, there are two books on the right upper uh, part of the slide. One is Neuroanalysis, which details the theory and findings of neuroanalysis. And another one is more narrative, which uh, tells a story about a resident in the year 2050 and how neuroanalysis would come about at that time. Clinical brain profiling is a diagnostic system that goes beyond the descriptive diagnostic system of the DSM. Now, why do we need uh, clinical brain profiling? Why do we need uh, an alternative for the DSM? Well, as you can see recently, the DSM-5 agenda has come up with some of the criticism against the DSM. And uh, as you can see, uh, they found that it can be concluded <coughs> that the field of psychiatry has thus far failed to identify a single neurobiological phenotype marker or gene that is useful in making diagnosis of major psychiatric disorder or for predicting response to ph pharmacological treatment. Furthermore, it was said that epidemiological and clinical studies have shown extreme high rates of comorbidities among the disorders, undermining the hypothesis that DSM syndromes represent distinct etiologies. In addition, the efficacy of medication cut across DSM defined categories. This is uh, given as an uh, example for SSRIs being uh, effective both for anxiety and depression. So from a pharmacological point of view, there is no distinction between these entities. But what I think is most uh, uh, important in this, uh, in this kind of uh, criticism is this last uh, statement circled uh, saying that reification of the DSM-4 entities to the point that they are considered equivalent to disease is more likely to obscure than to elucidate research findings. This may explain why in the last 30 years we have not advanced much in psychiatry because all the research that is being done was being done using the DSM and this can be probably very misleading. So as I think it looks like we really have uh, urgency to find a better and alternative way to diagnose uh, mental disorders. And as in other fields of medicine, we should direct our attention to a etiological, brain-related, brain-based uh, diagnostic system, which is the proposed CBP, or clinical brain profiling. To give you a general idea of what uh, clinical brain profiling is, I will argue that the uh, comprehensive spectrum of mental disorders can be explained as disorders of brain organization or more specifically of brain connectivity organizations. I will argue that personality disorders could be reflected as disorders of connectivity, of basic connectivity of, of what recently has been called the default network. I will then go on and argue that mood disorders and anxiety disorders are disorders of neural resilience or matching complexity, which is a complex uh, flexible adaptivity of uh, the brain to the input that it receives. I will go on and argue that psychosis and deficiency syndromes as found in schizophrenia, for example, are connectivity imbalance disorders. They are a breakdown of connectivity optimization and also of hierarchical brain connectivity organization. So clinical brain profiling is actually a translation of clinical findings into brain disorders. As early as back in the middle of the 1800s, Theodore Maynard already set down the important aspects of neural computation. He said that when we have an idea, a group of neurons is activated to represent this idea or this thought. He said that if we have an association between two ideas, then pathways form between the activations of the neurons that represent these ideas. 
He also said that each one of us has different thoughts and different uh, experiences, and thus each one has an individual set of organized uh, connectivity patterns in the brain, which are uh, individual to him and uh, represent the associations that he has uh, experienced. He called this type of organization, he called it ego. This term was uh, coined by him before Sigmund Freud, and actually Sigmund Freud was his student, and uh, now we can know where he got the idea of uh, using this term of ego. Actually, ego would be a brain organization uh, developed by experience, and this is very similar to the idea of internal representations and to the idea of object relation. In object relation psychology, uh, the external world is represent, represented in the brain and in the experience of the individual and it is dynamically changing all the time and actually object relation psychology deals with this kind of uh, individual internal representations. Cognitive psychologists would call this also context and the context is the way that we interpret by using an internal model or internal representation the outside experience, specifically the psychosocial experience, but also other physical experience. Uh, we can now say that the person's individuality or way of looking at, uh, at, the, at his experience and the way of experiencing the world, uh, which is actually similar to uh, personality or personality character, can be uh, also called a con context uh, processing uh, form or procedure, some kind of context processing procedure. It is interesting that recently a uh, default network has been found in the brain which may actually explain a stable connectivity pattern at rest and uh, this could uh, be the correlated uh, neural computation of uh, personality. Now, uh, if we assume that uh, this connectivity pattern represents information of how we look at the world around us and how we experience everything, then uh, we can try and start to look at personality as a, as a pattern of brain organization, while uh, personality disorders could be viewed as disturbances to this kind of uh, uh, structures that represent the context and the internal representation. I would suggest that the personality disorders could be in the future conceptualized as brain disorders in the form of a context-sensitive processing decline. If we assume that uh, the way we view the world is a context-sensitive process, then context-sensitive processing decline could be a general explanation for personality disorders. As we have seen, uh, Theodor Maynard uh, showed us that internal organizations can be formed by uh, ideas and thoughts, which actually come as denoted from uh, experience. Today we have this term, experience-dependent plasticity, which actually means that the environment can shape the plasticity, the connectivity, the brain organization. And this idea was further developed by Giulio Tononi, as he stated, the, st the statistical features of uh, the environmental stimuli determine statistical relationships of neural interactive organization. Uh, I would argue that this matching complexity is a um, dynamic process because all the time the environment changes and the brain changes and uh, matching complexity uh, is actually a dynamic uh, distance that uh, exists all the time between what happens in the environment and the way the brain is organized.